Hi, welcome to Rathod's IS Academy. I am your current affairs faculty. In this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 16th February 2022. In this lecture, we are going to discuss 7 to 8 topics which are very much relevant from our UPSC point of view. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see a brief introduction regarding the topics. Now we are going to have our discussion. So first topic it is regarding Jammu and Kashmir tribal politics. So actually recently delimitation committee which mainly submitted the report. So in that report it mainly came up with the reservation of seats for ST for the first time. Okay. Earlier there was reservation for this scheduled caste but there was no reservation for this ST that is a scheduled tribes. So despite of uh, there are many tribal peoples who are present in this Jammu and Kashmir, there was no representation from for this tribal people in legislative assembly. And now for the first time, here yeah, this time this delimitation committee which mainly made reservation for this ST category in this legislative assembly. So because of this, this is in news and this topic is very important from your polity point of view, especially you will you can correlate this topic with election okay election commissions and elections in india so this topic is very important especially from your mains point of view and even you can add this topic in your society and social issues regarding the tribals so tribals are also the integrated part okay they are also integrated part of our society so what are the issues which are mainly faced by this tribal so one of the thing here is there is no proper representation of tribals in this in this uh, government or we can say like there is no proper reservation for this sts especially this jammu and kashmir okay so now for the first time we can see there is a reservation for this scheduled tribe that is given in jammu and kashmir so this is one of the important news okay so this will be helpful for tribal empowerment as well and next topic is about gaming and banning so if you are following current affairs i think one year ago so Karnataka came up with some amendments regarding this gam, uh, gaming and as well as banning. So recently here high court mainly said that it is unconstitutional. So we need to know about what are those amendments are coming up uh, which mainly came up by this uh, Karnataka and what are the provisions why high court said that it is unconstitutional. So this is important from your policy point of view. So apart from that there is one article in page number 9 okay in opaque page regarding this caste, caste related data. Already we discussed that topic number of times you can go to that uh, article then you can easily understand what it says because already we had our discussion on that topic and if you are repeating that means it will be like wasting of your time. And next topic is about Russia says some troops pulling back from areas near Ukraine. So actually here regarding this uh, Russia and as well as Ukraine there was some crisis which is mainly going on and across this Russia and Ukraine border there is increasing of troops of Russia and now there is interference of other countries like uh, UK and as well as Russia which is uh, UK and USA. So because of this Russia which is mainly uh, mainly pulling back a troops across this Russia Ukraine border. So this article is important from your international relations which mainly comes under GS paper too. And next topic is about anti-lynching bills. Okay, so here you need to know about what is this lynching. So recently, anti-lynching bill which mainly passed by four states. So we need to know which are those states which mainly passed this anti-lynching bills, and even you need to know about provisions of that as well. So this is important from your policy once again. And next topic is about merchandise exports. So already you know that if you are talking about any economy. So it is mainly dependent on especially so what is the GDP and as well as employment and even exports okay exports. So these are the some important things that we need to re see regarding any economy. So here this article says that there is increasing of exports. So whenever we are increasing the exports it will be very much helpful for that country because whenever there is increasing of exports we can get money in return that okay return to this exports we will be getting money so normally when we are going for exports to other countries so the money we are getting in the forex uh, foreign currency so that will be helpful for foreign reserves and even that will be helpful for stability of the country as well and one more thing this article which mainly said that there is decreasing of imports of gold so because of this trade deficit which had been decreased so whenever we are discussing this article we are going to discuss that in a very great detail and next topic is about India may come under pressure on Russia. Okay, so this article which is mainly talking about MSC. So we need to discuss that. That is very important from your international relations which mainly comes under GS paper too. 
and next topic is regarding india to make digital maps of all villages so yesterday we discussed about i think yesterday not yesterday but before yesterday's we discussed about uh, geospatial okay geospatial tech sector in india and we discussed about what is a geospatial tech sector and what is the technology which is mainly used and even we saw applications and even what are the challenges and possible solutions right so here this article mainly talking about we are going to have this digital map Okay, so this is a one year first anniversary of uh, deregulation of this geospatial sector. Okay, after deregulation, we can also see there will be the entry of this private, okay, private sector as well. Actually, this article which is mainly talking about digital maps of all village. Uh, one important scheme which mainly talks about digital map of village is Swamitva scheme. So we are going to discuss that. That will be important from our governance point of view. Okay, so these are the articles. Now we are going to have our discussion. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see the quote. So actually this quote which is regarding women empowerment. As you all know women related uh, issues and as well as women empowerment, it is uh, one of the favorite area of UPSC. And from this area you can expect many questions, right? So the quote here is, women are the largest untapped reservoir of talent in the world. So why? Why the statement is given by this Hillary Clinton? So if you're talking about most of the women, they mainly doing domestic work. For example, they are doing household work like uh, take care of house and as well as looking after after mother-in-laws or elderly people and looking after the children. But what are the work which is done by the women? It is mainly comes under unpaid work and even it is not, not taken into account in GDP as well. So because of this here, Clinton mainly says that so women are the largest untapped reservoir of talent of the world and many women many a times they will be not coming out of their house to do some work okay only some women based on their household situation they will be coming outside to opt some work but most of the times here women they will be not coming outside so because of this whatever the talent that is present with this woman that is a one of the largest untapped reservoir of talent in the world so this is about this quote and you can use this quote whenever you're talking about women empowerment and women related issues and especially you can talk about uh, contribution of women in workforce in the country okay so in that area you can use this quote and now let us try to see the first article it is regarding Jammu and Kashmir tribal politics right so here title says that setting right to the focal point of Jammu and Kashmir tribal politics okay it's mainly talking about Jammu and Kashmir tribal politics and I will try my level best to make you understand this topic it is a very very simple topic actually so it is mainly talking about tribals right so you need to know about who are the tribals mainly residing in this Jammu and Kashmir okay and you have to know about reservation of seats in this uh, legislative assembly especially in Jammu and Kashmir so you need to know about previous delimitation committee uh, reports Okay, and you have to know about why there was no reservation for this uh, scheduled tribe still now in this Jammu and Kashmir. Okay, so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. And these are some perspectives in those uh, ways you have to do your thinking, right? So here this article mainly says that it must be economic, social empowerment and even we need to go for implementation of this Forest Rights Act and women participation. Okay, so this article mainly says that so we need to include economic and as well as social empowerment of these tribal people and also we need to go for proper implementation of this Forest Rights Act and even we need to focus on women participation especially in this politics. Okay, so if we are talking about this uh, article, so why it is in news? So recently Jammu and Kashmir, okay, Jammu and Kashmir Delimitation Commission, Jammu and Kashmir Delimitation Commission which has recently shared its interim report okay Jammu and Kashmir delimitation commission which mainly came up with this interim report and it is interim remote uh, report with five associate members and as well as uh, members of parliament from the erstwhile state okay so this report mainly come up by the five associate members and even some elected members of this uh, parliament uh, okay from this erstwhile state so what happened in 2019 on august 5th there was one historical step which is mainly taken by government of India. It was revocation of article 370 of Indian constitution. 
So this Article 370, which mainly talks about special category status for this Jammu and Kashmir. So after this revocation of this article, government also came up with this Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act. So through this act, as to a Jammu and Kashmir state, which mainly divide into two union territories. First one is Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Next one is Union Territory of Ladakh. And this Jammu and Kashmir, which mainly gave with uh, legislative assembly. So after this Union Territory formed, there was delimitation commission, which mainly established mainly for the uh, further division. Okay. So actually, you know that what is this delimitation? So what is this delimitation commission? I think you might have already studied in your polity static syllabus, right? And if you're talking about some important points regarding this interim report, so it mainly proposed that six seats in this Jammu and Kashmir province and one seat in Kashmir province, six seats in Jammu and one seat in Kashmir province, though it does not claim to treat whole union territory as one unit for seat distribution. So here it came up with six seats in Jammu and as well as one seat in Kashmir. Okay. So it is not treating whole union territory as a one unit for seed distribution. And if you are talking about one more important salient feature of this interim report here is it mainly proposed nine seeds, okay, nine seeds which should be reserved for this ST category that is scheduled tribes. So for the scheduled tribes about nine seeds are reserved. And why it is important? Because it is for the first time, okay, it is for the first time seats they have been reserved for this scheduled tribe community okay for the legislative assembly of this jammu and kashmir for the first time so this delimitation committee which mainly recommended for the reservation of seats for this st community but if you're talking about this scheduled caste already we have some reserved seats for this scheduled caste that is six seats from jammu and one seat from the kashmir they are mainly reserved for this scheduled caste Right. So if you're talking about reservation, okay, so actually you know that here for the ST and as well as SC categories that is scheduled tribes and as well as scheduled caste. So there was reservation of seats. But here there is a there is a denial. There is a denial of constitutionally guaranteed reservation under this article 332. So from art, uh, from 1991, that is from post-1991 onwards. So under this article 332, which mainly talks about reservation, there is no proper reservation for the scheduled tribes. Okay. So from 1991 onwards, there is no proper reservation that is given for this ST, that is scheduled tribes. And one important reason which is mainly said here is article 370. So because of presence of this article 370, which has often been given as a reason for the absence of reservation for tribals in Jammu and Kashmir, but it is not at all true. Okay, so an important reason behind there is denial of this constitutional reservation for the scheduled tribes here is Article 370 of Indian Constitution. So what might be the real reason? The real reason here is there is a lack of political will. Okay, there is a lack of political will okay political will so nothing like article 370 which has prevented the provision of reservation for the scheduled tribes okay or we can talk about extension of this forest rights act of 2006 to jammu and kashmir but over years there are many features of indian constitution and many laws were extended to jammu and kashmir why not only the reservation for the scheduled tribes and as well as forest rights act Okay, so this is the one important question which is mainly posed by author. Author mainly says that so here over years, over years, even though this 370 article which mainly talks about special category states for this Jammu and Kashmir, so over the years there are many laws of Indian constitution which mainly extended to this Jammu and Kashmir, but only this Forest Rights Act of 2006 and even the political reservation for the scheduled tribes which is not extended. So why? Okay. Further, if you're talking about scheduled caste in Jammu and Kashmir, they had reservation even before the dilution of this article 370. So before dilution of this article 370 here, so even though for scheduled caste there was reservation provision, but not for the scheduled tribes. So because it is due to the lack of political will. So it is because of lack of political will, okay, from an unwillingness to share power with the groups which are ethnically and culturally different 
from both Dogras and as well as Kashmiris. So if we are talking about two predominant groups in Jammu and Kashmir, there were Dogras and Kashmiris. But there are other people, okay, other tribal people are present, but they are ethnically and culturally, they are very much different with this Dogras and Kashmiri. And there is also lack of political will. Okay, so after dilution of this Article 370 of Indian Constitution on this August 5th and 6th, uh, 2019, Okay, and government also came up with the State Reorganization Act of 2019. So, because of this act, which mainly changes some political dimensions or political dynamics in this region. And if you are talking about as far as the tribals are concerned, so it mainly promised the reservation, political reservation now through this Article 332 of Indian Constitution. And even after this, uh, uh, reorganization of state, uh, reorganization of this Jammu and Kashmir Act, which came into picture. So even they are mainly talking about extension of this Forest Rights Act of 2006 to this Jammu and Kashmir as well. Okay, so these are the two important things uh, or political dynamics that we can see in this Jammu and Kashmir now. So we are talking about these tribes. Tribal politics also it's very very important because whenever there is a proper representation of these tribals that is seen in the politics means so they are political, they are social, they are ethnical and as well as cultural rights they can be preserved. And even if you are talking about our fundamental rights, so there is a fundamental rights mainly to preserve this cultural heritage. Okay, And even if you are talking about this tribal politics, it has to address what are the political, what are the social, economical empowerment of these marginal tribes. And this will be helpful for especially what are the problems you are facing. Okay, So if you are coming from the so and so community means you will be understanding what are the problems that they are facing in detail. So if you are from outside of the community means you might not be understanding what are the problems that are facing by these so and so people. So for this, for addressing of this social, political and economical issues, so the representation of uh, representation of a uh, person from that community is very, very important. If you're talking about tribal peoples which are mainly present in this Jammu and Kashmir, they are like Bakir Walls and as well as Gaddi, Sipis. So if you're talking about population, they will be like 1,13,198 people of Bakir Walls and Gaddis they include 46,486 uh, people and Sipis are like 5, uh, approximately 6,000 people, right? So there is a large amount of population that is seen from this tribal people. So why not we can give this reservation for this uh, scheduled tribes? So if you're talking about Bakir Walls, they are very important actually. Actually, you might come ac across this patch for shawls, okay? So that is mainly done by this Bakar walls. And if you are talking about because of no proper empowerment of this tribal people, there is no proper development of any community and even we need to focus on this empowerment of women as well. Okay. And if you are talking about women, so women they can play a major role even in the tribal politics. Okay. And we need to give the representation of this women in this uh, politics as well. Okay. So this is about this topic and I hope it is very much clear. Now let us try to see next topic is regarding gaming and banning. So this article which is mainly talking about online gaming, online gaming. So recently Karnataka government which came up with a bill regarding this uh, amendments for this online gaming and banning. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So this article is very important from your polity events again. And this type of topics will be important from your mains from not your prelims. So if you are talking about central theme it mainly says that Online gaming might be addictive. Okay, online gaming might be addictive. So you might be knowing about this impact of this online gaming on school children, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. So what happened because of this COVID-19 pandemic already, we know that schools, colleges, universities had been shut down. So because of the shutdown of this uh, schools and these schools, they went for offline to digital learning or online learning. Okay, they started taking class on Zoom meet or any, any other online mode. Then what happened, there is a need of uh, this phones or tablets or laptops for the children. And that led to increasing of penetration of mobile phones that is seen. So because of this increase in the mobile phones, instead of uh, watching the classes, or uh, instead of attending the classes which is taken by the schools or colleges, their students, they started playing games on online. So because of this online gaming, so many, many children, they have been addicted to this games especially I can name one game that is free fire okay free fire 
so for this game many students they had been addicted and even you might be uh, knowing about this blue whale okay so because of this blue whale there are number of sources had been increased okay so because of that government came up with the banning of this blue whale game okay so here author says that yes because of uh, this online gaming that made much addictive but a ban will mitigate against individual freedom but whenever we are going for the banning of games means it will mainly violate in this individual frame uh, freedom so this is the thing which mainly said by high court so now let us try to understand this article in a very great detail so this article especially focusing on this online gaming so what happened recently karnataka government it want to make a one legislative attempt especially to prohibit this online gaming but this attempt which is mainly made by this karnataka government which mainly failed so karnataka government came up with some amendments okay regarding existing regulations regarding betting and as well as gambling in karnataka but this provision which mainly stuck down by karnataka high court so this is the context so last year what happened madras high court invalidated similar amendments and this amendments which mainly targeted online rummy and poker game so what is the important aim to come up with this type of step by this karnataka government it is mainly aiming for protecting the people and especially to protect the youth youth from temptations on this online gambling okay but these provision had been failed to make discussions between the game on skill and as well as game of chance so for example if you are talking about different types of games or there so some types of games which are mainly based on chance or luck okay i think you might be you might had played chain reaction game okay in that chain reaction it is a purely based on your chance but if you see some games will be based on skill okay if you have skill then you can go for winning in that game so actually this amendments of this uh, karnataka state government which mainly do not did any distinction between the games of skill and as well as games of chance okay and sought to bring under the prospection of all games played online regardless to the extent to which skill is required so this amendment said that we have to go for banning of on all online games so it does not make any distinction between the game of skill and as well as game of chance okay so because of this it is one of the important uh, loophole that i can say and the court has pointed out that if the objective was to curb this menace of gambling then government should prohibit activities that amount to gambling as such and not the game of skill so whenever one important aim of this karnataka government it is to curb this menace of gambling so whenever they want to arrest this gambling means they can prohibit the activities okay which are relating this gambling why we have to go for banning of online games so this is the one important idea or important issue which mainly pointed out by this high court so if we are talking about what are those bill okay so it is karnataka police amendment bill 2021 so actually this law includes all forms of betting or wagering in connection with any game of chance okay except horse racing so except horse racing so this law which mainly includes all forms of betting and wagering in connection with any game of chance but this law opposed by online gaming companies okay so many online gaming companies they are mainly providing the games so those companies mainly oppose to this move of government and stating that this policy would affect the prospectus of karnataka okay which is emerging as online gaming companies hub so here we can say like karnataka which is mainly coming coming up with this hub of this online games so whenever this type of law which is mainly came up by the karnataka government means it mainly affect the idea of this online gaming companies hub of karnataka so this act also banned all fam- formats of online games including wagering betting gambling of all the nature in the state okay so under this even online gaming was considered as a non bailable offense you are not go- you are not going to get even bail here and it mainly provides fine of rupees 1 lakh and imprisonment up to 3 years okay so apart from this uh, banning games of skills government also categorized online games using electronic means and even virtual currency and even electronic transfer of funds associated with any game as gambling for example if you are uh, if you are uh, 
playing any games it says that if you pay so and so amount of money you will be getting so and so lifelines okay so in this way what happened the children who are playing these games they will be also doing some transaction especially to get the lifelines or especially to get the stars like that okay so this is also comes under this gambling so why karnataka has amended this type of law okay why has karnataka amended the law so you have you need to know there are the four important reasons that highlighted so you have to know that then you can appreciate why government came up with this type of law so first one is it want to go for ban on online gambling okay so because of this online gambling since the number of people they are entering into the debt trap so because of this government mainly want to ban this online gambling so and government want to make this online gambling it is a cognizable and as well as non bailable offense and this one is more power to police so other reason which mainly cited that police can not raid gambling dens without a formal written order from a magistrate okay so whenever this type of law which is come up by the government means it will be helpful for increasing of power of police and they need not have this formal written order mainly to go for raiding in this gambling events and this one is public demands for ban so even there are there is some public interest litigation that is pil which is mainly file in supreme court regarding ban on online gaming and betting okay so that also led to this amendment and next one is illicit use of cyber space a new law has also been introduced to include the use of cyber space as defined in this information technology act of 2000 it is mainly focusing to curb the menace of uh, menace of this gambling through internet so these are the some important reason that may trigger this amendment by this karnataka government so this is just of this topic and i hope it is very much clear now let us try to see next topic it is regarding russia says some troops pulling back from areas near ukraine so this article which is mainly talking about across this ukraine and as well as russia border there was increasing of this troops of russia that is mainly seen and here we have this crimea actually this crimea which mainly annexed by russia in 2014 okay so here because of increasing of pressure of us and as well as uk now there is some reducing of troops by this russia which is mainly seen across this russia ukraine border so this article it is important from your international relations which mainly comes in the gs paper too now once again let us have a discussion regarding what are the issues that led to conflict between russia and as well as ukraine so if you are new to our channel so if you don't know about what is the issue that led for this uh, crisis between russia and ukraine so now we are going to discuss about that so if you see context it mainly says that russia said some of its military units they were returning to their bases after exercise near ukraine okay following days of us and as well as british warnings that moscow might invade its neighbor at any time okay so because of increase in the pressure of us and as well as british so now russia said that they are going to decrease the troops or they are going to pull back the some of this troops near this ukraine border so if you see some more details it mainly says that it was not clear that how many units were being withdrawn and and how much distance they are going to go back so there is no proper estimates and if you are talking about the development which mainly drew a cautious response from this ukraine so now let's try to see what are the issues or the what are the causes for the conflict between russia and as well as ukraine So actually, if you are talking about the Soviet Union, okay? So already we know that the disintegration of Soviet Union that happened in 1990s, especially in 1991. So after disintegration of this Soviet Union, so Ukraine, which became an independent region, okay, after disintegration or the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, so Ukraine became independent nation, okay? Actually, this Ukraine was earlier part of this Russian Empire. and later on it got independent and it became independent nation after disintegration of this of this soviet union and after it became independent nation actually actually it is mainly moving towards west okay it is having close ties towards west so because of this that led to some some conflict or differences between this ukraine and as well as russia so since its independence country is battling corruption and as well as internal division okay so since independence that got by this ukraine so at that time of independence onwards it is mainly fighting against corruption in the country and even internal division here so if you are talking about this ukraine so actually this is the eastern part and this will be the western part 
so western side they wants to integrate with the west and eastern regions they want to integrate with the russia so because of this there were some conflicts that is mainly seen between the people of this eastern side and as well as the western side and this conflict which mainly started with ukrainian president who rejected an association agreement with the european union in favor of closer ties with moscow okay so here at that time the conflict which was much more escalated because this uh, ukrainian president who did not want to join or come up with a closer ties with this russia and later on that led to protest okay so this protest is also known with a famous name that is called as revolution of dignity okay so after this revolution of dignity russia mainly annexed this ukraine's crimean peninsula in 2014 okay in 2014 here russia came with annexation of this crimean peninsula of ukraine and after this it mainly attacked this donbas it is a country's industrial heartland so because of this attack on this donbas about 14000 people they lost their life in this armed conflict between this ukrainian forces and as well as russian backed this separatist and ukraine and the west which mainly accused russia especially for the deploying of troops and as well as sending weapons okay weapons to these rebellions etc here and what happened recently recently russia which mainly criticized us and as well as nato groups to aid to help this ukraine with the weapons and as well as joint military drills and here here russian president okay he mainly expressed some concerns that yeah ukraine should not join this nato members okay nato membership so this is the one important issue that is mainly happening between russia and as well as ukraine okay i hope it is very much clear and now let us try to say next topic it is regarding anti lynching bills okay anti lynching bills passed by four states hanging fire so this article which is mainly talking about this anti lynching bills about four states which mainly passed this anti lynching bills so if you see this infographic you can see which are those states which mainly passed and what's the status of that anti lynching bill so first state here is jharkhand jharkhand already passed this anti lynching bill so the name of that bill is the prevention of mob violence and mob lynching bill 2021 so this bill which mainly provides for the punishment and this punishment which is mainly ranging from 3 years in prison to life imprisonment in case of any death of victim here so the convicted may be may be fined between 3 lakh to 25 lakh rupees dependent on depend upon the severity of the crime and second state here is you can see rajasthan So the Rajasthan bill is the Rajasthan Protection from Lynching Bill 2019. Actually, this bill, which mainly provides for the imprisonment and fine, it will be like one lakh to five lakh rupees. And next one is West Bengal. So the West Bengal Prevention of Lynching Bill 2019. Actually, this bill mainly provides a provision for the death uh, sentence, and even it proposes a jail term from three years to life imprisonment. and this one is manipur so manipur bill is manipur protection from mob violence bill 2018 and this bill which mainly proposes rigorous life imprisonment for those who involved in this mob lynching okay so these are the four states which came up with their bills regarding this anti lynching so now let us try to see the context here so bills mainly passed against lynching in past four years by at least three states so actually the four states which mainly passed this anti lynching bills okay from the past four years onwards there was very much development that is seen in this anti lynching or lynching bills okay so here union government mainly says that lynching is not defined as a crime under this ipc that is indian penal code so in this context here central government says that whenever we want to talk about this lynching so this lynching will not become under the crime of uh, under this ipc that is indian penal code So now let us try to see some details. Actually, in two thousand seventeen, NCRB National Crimes Record Bureau, which mainly collected data regarding this mob lynching, hate crimes, and as well as cow vigilantism. Okay, and whatever the data which is mainly collected by this NCRB had not been published, and whatever the data collection method or whatever the work they are doing, so this work has been discontinued. Discontinued as these crimes are not defined. and what are the data that they are collected it is not reliable as well so on 22nd december jharkhand assembly which mainly passed this prevention of mob lynching or mob violence and mob lynching bill 
Actually, it mainly talks about imprisonment. That is like three years to lifetime imprisonment. Actually, this bill which is passed in the houses, but it this need to get assent from the governor. Okay, and if you are talking about in two thousand nineteen August fifth, Rajasthan Assembly also passed this bill, and it mainly talks about life imprisonment, and as well as fine that is from one lakh to five lakhs those are mainly convicted. So here we need to know about what is this lynching. So lynching means nothing but if you are doing any act or any series of act of violence, and this act of violence which is mainly helping and as well as encouraging such acts or acts thereof. Whether spontaneous or planned by a mob on the grounds of religion, a race, caste, sex, place of birth, language, dietary practices, sexual orientation, political affiliation, ethnicity, or any other related grounds, so these acts will be coming under this lynching. Okay, so how are the cases handled? Okay, so as of now there is no separate uh, provision or separate definition for such incidents. Okay. But here, this lynching-related uh, crimes which are mainly dealt under this IPC, that is Section three hundred and as well as Section three not two of IPC. And if you are talking about this Section three not two, which mainly provides that whatever commits a murder shall be punished with a death or imprisonment of life. Okay. So under this IPC, uh, this Section three not two, which mainly says says that. Whoever commits a murder, or uh, that sh uh, that person should be punished with a death or imprisonment for life, and he or she also liable to fine as well. Okay, and this offence, which is like a cognizable offence, uh, offence, and as well as it is also a non-bailable offence. Okay, so this is about this topic, and now let us try to see next topic. Title says exports rise. Twenty five percentage and it is like dollar thirty four point five billion in month of January. So in month of January there is increasing of our merchandise exports. So this article it is important from your economy point of view, which mainly comes under US Paper three. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So if you see context, it mainly says that India's merchandise exports, which mainly increased by twenty five point three percentage. If you are comparing with the last year, that is twenty twenty one January, and if you are comparing with this twenty twenty two January, it is like twenty five point three percentage increase of our merchandise exports, and the value here is like thirty four point five billion in the month of January. Okay, so this is about uh, context, and even this article says that trade deficit. Trade deficit means means we can say like im uh, imports or exports. For example, exports minus imports. Okay, exports minus imports. Whenever we are exporting more, whenever exports are more compared to that of imports, that is called as we can say like trade surplus. And if you are talking about exports, okay, exports are less when we are comparing imports. We will be having trade deficit. Okay, so here what happened here? The exports are increasing. That means we are having trade surplus. So trade surplus means we will be having decreasing of trade deficit. Okay, so this article says that because of increasing of exports, it is like twenty five percent higher, and even there is decreasing of imports of especially gold. Gold it is a costly item, so because of decrease of import of gold and because of increase of our ex uh, merchandise exports, so now we are also having the trade deficit which is low. Okay, so if you are talking about details, it mainly says that while January goods exports are. Eight point seven five five percentage lower than the December's. Okay, so if we are comparing with the December, that is last month. So even though there is a less number of exports than compared to that of December month, but on another side there is decreasing of imports, especially this gold. Okay, so because of this, we are having the less trade deficit this year. So this is the one important thing which mainly said, and there is no need of remembering of that numbers. Okay, facts. And now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding India may come under pressure on Russia. So this article, which is important from your international relations, which mainly comes under your GS paper too. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So title says that European countries will make a push for India to take a stronger line on you on Russia 
as external affairs minister jay shankar travels to attend annual meeting okay annual meeting at this moon security conference so our external affairs minister he is going to attend this moon security conference okay so if you're talking about this moon security conference annually this meeting will be held so here our external affairs minister he is going to this uh, meet of annual moon uh, security conference so because of this european countries they mainly say that india will come under the control of russia okay so this is the context and if you're talking about some important details it mainly says that here external affairs minister he is likely to meet his counterparts including this european union and as well as germany during this conference and in this conference they mainly expected to focus on the fears regarding this russia and as well as ukraine conflict okay and even white house white house a spokesperson he also discussed that what are the challenges that are facing by this russia which mainly poses some threats to this rules based international order okay so these are the some important things actually you need to focus on this moon security conference so this is very important from our prelims point of view so if we are talking about this moon security conference actually this conference will be held every year that is annual conference okay and this conference which is mainly focusing on this international security so actually it takes place in this moon uh, germany since to 1963 so because of this the name which is given for this conference is moon security conference okay so moon security conference is annual conference that will be held very every year and it is mainly going to talk about issues regarding international security okay so even though in 2019 india mainly raised the issue regarding this pulwama attack okay so uh, so yesterday i think february 14th not yesterday day before yesterday february 14th 2019 there was pulwama attack so it is mainly called as a black day all as well okay so what happened in 2019 india mainly raised this pulwama attack pulwama terror attack during the bilateral meetings with the several countries as well okay so this moon security conference it is one of the independent venue for the policy makers and even for the experts and they can go there and they can meet and even they can have some constructive discussions and even open discussions regarding what are the some issues they are mainly facing regarding the security of so and so country and even issues of future and one more thing here is so this moon security conference which mainly publishes this moon security report so actually this report it is like an annual digest of relevant figures and it mainly talks about relevant maps research regarding the critical security challenges so this is important and now let us try to talk about next topic it is regarding india to make digital maps of all villages so it is regarding this biospatial sector okay so now geospatial sector uh, so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail actually i think two days ago we discussed one editorial regarding this geospatial sector regarding what are the challenges that are facing and what is about the deregulation of this geospatial sector like that so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so this topic it is important from your governance point of view actually so if you see context it mainly says that india plans to prepare this digital maps okay of all its 6 lakh villages so india going to come up with this digital maps of all 6 lakh villages and even it is going to come up with this 3d pan india maps okay and this is the thing which mainly said by union minister of state for science and technology okay so this is the statement which is mainly made by our union minister for state for science and technology so if we're talking about some important details it mainly says that so there is one ongoing scheme which is mainly piloted by this panchayat raj ministry and this scheme it is swamitva so this swamitva mainly stands for survey of villages and mapping with improvised technology in village areas so i think this scheme was launched by our prime minister in year 2020 okay so now recently last year we came up with deregulation of this geospatial sector so now because of this updated guidelines of private sector or private companies they can also prepare the variety of maps okay and they do not need much approvals okay from the ministries and they can easily use the drones and they can use some applications via location mapping as well okay so in this context the union minister said that we are going to have entire maps of the 6 lakh villages okay and the complete geospatial policy would be announced as soon as liberalization of guidelines had been yielded a very positive outcomes within a year time so actually yesterday that is 15 february we celebrated this anniversary of this geospatial okay deregulation 
So in this one year, there was much progress that is seen in this geospatial sector because of entry of private sector. So this is the thing which mainly said by our union minister. And if you are talking about what will be the applications of this geospatial information. So your geographical information of so and so area. So it will be very helpful for forest management. It will be helpful for disaster management and even electrical utilities. And we will be having a proper land records of that so and so village. And even we will be having proper water distribution and as well as property taxation. Okay. So these are the some important applications. So you have to remember that applications for sure. And now let us try to see this infographic which mainly talking about this Swamitva Yojana. So actually this mainly launched in launched on this National Panchayat Raj Day. And now it is on, launched on this pilot basis in six states. It will be helpful for mapping of rural inhabited land areas. And they will be using some new technology and as well as drones for mapping. And if you are talking about this Swamitva, okay, Swamitva to people, it will be helpful for identification of property rights as well. And it will be also helpful for settling of uh, property disputes in rural India. And even it will be helpful for revenue collection and as well as some mapping. Okay, so this is about this topic and these are the some important articles that appear in today's newspaper. And don't forget to refer this cast data as well which appear in this open page. And now let us try to see explanation for yesterday's questions. So first one is president appoints pro tem speaker to preside over the first sitting of the Lok Sabha after the general elections. Okay, after the general elections, president will appoint his pro tem speaker. So this pro tem speaker, it is a annual thing. Every year we will be seeing this pro tem speaker. And if you're talking about pro tem chairman, it will be like a guest thing. Okay, it will be not seen every year. Okay, so if you're talking about this pro tem speaker, president appoints his pro tem speaker to preside over the first sitting of Lok Sabha until speaker of that house is elected. Okay, who is going to administer the oath? First one is president, second one is CJI, third one is speaker and fourth one is conventionally pro tem speaker does not take any oath. Okay, actually he will take oath, that oath will be administered by the president itself. Second option will be one. And second question is, on account of this national emergency, the government may require funds to meet unexpected demand for money for which it may not be possible to give a detailed estimates. So in such a case, parliament can grant money through, first one is vote of credit, second one is supplementary grants and third one is vote on account and fourth one is exceptional grant. So the money will be granted through this vote of credit. So option one is correct answer. Okay, now let us try to see the today's questions. So before seeing this today's questions, I want to make a small announcement on this platform. So if you want to clear this UPSC, exclusively in Rathor's eyes, we are providing wide range of courses. So first one here is a prelims test series. So this will be very useful to analyze your preparation and even that will be helpful to analyze how the questions will be framed in UPSC because the questions are framed as per UPSC standards. And you also have this mains answer writing course. So as you all know, mains it is a deciding factor that will make or break the deal. Okay, so if you are performing well in mains, for sure I can say you are going to get your uh, your final service. And even I can ensure you that if you are getting like 35 to 40 percentage of marks in your mains, means your name will be there in final list. And getting that 30 to 40 percent of marks, it is like a big thunder. Okay, so whenever you are focusing on this main start, mains answer writing, even though if you are a beginner or even if you if you had gave your attempts, it is a one of the nice thing that you can say. So whenever you start your preparation, you have to focus on this mains answer writing as well. So in this mains answer writing course, we are dividing the syllabus, okay, of entire UPS of GS1, GS2, GS3, GS4 in one year. And we will be giving you weekly targets. So based on that targets, daily one question will be given. On Sunday, there will be exclusively essay or case study practice. So in this way here, within one year, I will assure you that you are going to complete each and every topic of your syllabus. And there will be evaluation of your answers and one-to-one -one mentorship as well. And we also launched an entire foundational course for UPSC CSC 2023. And there like we, we are providing like more than 700 hours of video lectures. Okay, and we are focusing on conceptual clarity and each and every single subtopic in your syllabus is also discussed. And if you want to take individual courses like economy, history, geography, science and technology, disaster management, environment and ecology polity, you can take those individual courses also. So details of these courses are given in the description box 
and even if you want to see where these courses will be available you can click on the uh, if you can click here such that uh, you can you will be directed to this uh, website of Rathod's IS Academy there you can register with your email ID and there you can watch three demo videos in each and every module without paying a single penny okay so these courses will be available in our website Rathod's IS Academy so please visit that website and even if you want to download the app, link of this app is also given in the description box. You can download that app easily. Okay. So these courses are exclusively useful. And if you want to talk to me regarding these courses, you can call to this number 807-476-5513. I am the academy director of the Stratos IS Academy. And if you want to talk to me, you can call to this number. And let us see the today's questions. Okay. Today's questions are based on environment and ecology. So let us have a practice of like 50 to 60 questions regarding this environment and ecology such that we will be completing our polity, geography and environment also. Okay, within 10 days we are going to complete this environment related questions also. And the first question it is regarding, regarding photosynthetically active radiation. Okay, so this is a very important concept in your environment. So please try to read the statements and give your answer. And next one is the productivity of ecosystem. So in this way you can get a question directly in your prelims actually this type of questions which uh, which I which you got I think in 2016 or 2017 in your prelims okay so try to answer these questions so there is no negative marking here so give your answer in comment box so if there is any need of suggestion any need of improvement and please give me your suggestions in the comment box so by this I'm concluding today I hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to Rathod's IS Academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos Thank you so much.